Let's talk about hospital navigation or hospital directions, maps, wayfinding, way dash finding, whatever term you want to use. Let's talk about why it is tricky for patients and caregivers to get around in a hospital. Admittedly, these are complex buildings. Usually they've gone through many renovations and had additions and new buildings built on top of buildings on top of buildings. And I admit, trying to design a simple solution to help show patients where to go is tricky. But I have actually found a solution when I was in the Netherlands, and I want to share that with you. But first, let's look at some examples of contemporary wayfinding, uh, contemporary hospital navigation systems that I don't think are very good. And what I want to discuss a lot in the first part of this post is that the popular yet misguided addition of colors and tones and brighter and bolder patterns, cartoons, photos, textures, lines, arrows, and 3D effects. Although this is well-intentioned, it clutters the message. And this is both a problem of something called chart junk and something which we're going to call nav junk. We'll unpack both of those terms a bit later. But let's just dive right on in and look at what we would say is kind of part of contemporary uh, wayfinding upgrades. You'll often see in a hospital that they'll replace old signs with new signs, uh, thinking that they're making things better. So in the past, for instance, you may have had uh, traditional signs where you had a building name, a wing, north or south. You might have had a level indicated, level one or two, and a department title. So you might have had a requisition that you should come to uh, the... Uh, Franklin Building, South Wing, Level 2, Cardiac Clinic. Hmm, it's probably reasonably intuitive on where you should go. Unfortunately, as part of the zealous wayfinding upgrades, you may now find a requisition on your lab uh, work that you should present to the Cardiac Clinic in the Purple Polar Bear Zone, or that you should come to Unit B in the Green Owl in the Orange Zone. What floor is this on? And is the cardiology clinic in the purple polar bear zone adjacent to the orange zone? It's very hard to understand um, spatial relationships with these new uh, wayfinding techniques. For instance, what we can see on the screen here are actually several different uh, zone names as used in a hospital. They have orange bison, yellow deer, blue good bear, teal fish, purple bear, pink goose, green owl, magenta fox. Um, First, you know, I'm not sure why magenta was selected or teal was selected um, as the color. I think red fox would have been a much more accessible and easy term for people to uh, think about and remember. I don't actually know how many people know even what color teal is. Um, so this is the, the start of the problem of we've renamed uh, using modern wayfinding ideology uh, some very strange combinations. And a lot of this is to try to create a unique name or a unique image for each uh, unit and location. And so, of course, not only should the location have their name move away from, you could call it an anatomical name, uh, a building name, a uh, level, a department, and a wing, but now we use this imaginative naming structure, which isn't grounded in spatial reality. And of course, then we have to redecorate the entrance to that unit or, or clinic. And so we have an example on the left of a very reasonable wall uh, made out of some sort of a stone. Uh, unfortunately, it had a purple bear in the middle of it. Um, and now we have the upgraded and allegedly much improved version which is a very high resolution macro image of ice, uh, which has been tinted purple. This is the type of uh, upgrades to hospitals which uh, do not last for 50 years. Uh, I suspect that this is gonna look very dated very quickly. And so I wanna make two comments about uh, this new sort of type of wayfinding ideology. First. These color animal associations in the example given, which is a real hospital, they don't make any sense. I don't even know if these designers went to elementary school. Uh, The second 
uh, is the problem which we've been discussing, which is the issue with spatial relationships. It's hard to know if the green owl part of the hospital is adjacent to the orange deer part, or are they separated and by how much? It's also, uh, and so I think that's a really uh, big problem. Let's go through actually a bunch of examples here of different m modern wayfinding ideology. As you can see just through s this brief skimming of the images, there's a super abundance of color, of tone, intensity, texture, cartoons. There's nothing uh, subtle about any of this design. And so it's, it's, there's a, an ideology here that if we just make it bigger and bolder, people will finally figure out how to get around this building. Uh, here's an example where every different level of the hospital has a different color. Because obviously, that, you know, simply using the numbers uh, 1 through 10 was, was far too hard for people to, to know what, what floor to go to. So if we, if we just say it's the blue floor, now at least you'll know where to go. Um, you know, here's another example of uh, at the top an arrow pointing to 3A, 3B, to the orange elevator, the brown elevator, and then some washrooms, which are probably just generic washrooms, um, but they're on green backing. So I don't know if the color here has anything to do with it, but I suspect the color here has something to do with it. So we have an inconsistency of part of the icons in this image, the color means something, and part of them probably mean nothing. It's bizarre. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what the value of calling the third floor beach and the fourth floor savanna is. Uh, I, saying that I'm going to the fourth floor probably would be reasonably intuitive. Uh, oh, this is great. We've got a purple sign with white text on it. And then we have, pointing to the left, arrows, for a whole bunch of different wings and labs. Some of the arrows in light green, some in red. The This dangerous red looking arrow is for the octave boat nar wing. And then we've got a, a very friendly uh, line up across the top of the sign in, in, in friendly green, which is actually the fire exit. All right. And then we have some lines in blue that point to the left and to the right. We have some arrows pointing around the corner, uh, typical sign, typical hospital sign. Here we've got, again, a, a very non-subtle entrance. It looks like this is to the lift and stairs for unit B. And then out in the background of the sign, we see that you can go to the east wing, Lambeth wing, north wing. You can also walk out. And uh, it's very kind that all, uh, one, two, three, four, five, all six different items on this sign each have their own individual arrow uh, to show you that all, all six of these are behind this door because simply one arrow wouldn't have been enough. In this case, we've done away with words because those are, are too hard and we've just inserted some icons on the floor because obviously, obviously this is very intuitive where, what these mean. Um, here we have uh, some icons, but importantly, actually, this is half decent. We have text, which is which is good. Ah, this sign, what a disaster. So this is kind of the best of all wor worst worlds. We have a whole bunch of really tiny writing on both sides of this sign. Each individual line they have thoughtfully indicated uh, goes either to the left or to the right. And then in case you didn't realize that they've also added, I think, I don't know if this was added afterwards, but these giant orange arrows on the far left and far right side of the sign uh, pointing in the exact same one of two directions, left to right, that the rest of the sign is. And then, uh, I hate this, they've added... Uh, very high resolution photography with color filters over it showing that this, I don't know, what is this? An orange grain of wheat is level one. Level zero is some sort of a blue thingamabob. Two is a green leaf and three is sky blue. Uh, here we have a women and babies unit with purple and blue. That actually is not, that's actually half decent. Uh, this unit, we've, we've got a whole, whole selection of different 
uh, animal associations and color associations and small fonts. At least this sign just thought that one arrow was sufficient for all uh, five items on the sign. So, so th that's an improvement from the sign we saw before. Um, here we go. We've recolored every floor in the hospital again. Uh, oh, look at this. This is not easy to read. This sign is a complete disaster. Uh, if if someone tried to present this, uh, they, they should just be fired. Not only do they have uh, white text on bright neon yellow, which is unreadable, but every different color in this alternating uh, concoction as a different intense pattern in the background. See, the, the, this is all, this is what we're going to call nav junk, and I'm going to explain the origin of this term a little bit later. But this, this is exactly what nav junk is. This is a perfect example. Uh, here we go. Uh, this sign here illustrates the fact that, uh, you know, rather than having a kiosk or stand on the ground, which people can read, uh, come up close and look through a long list when they're trying to find where they want to go on the map in the hospital, that uh, this hospital has decided to put that map up on the ceiling uh, as a giant sign. And so if you want to try to figure out where you need to go, uh, you just need to read through all uh, six of these different panels until you can find uh, the, the one which you're looking for. And they've actually run out of space on the ceiling and are now actually putting the stickers on the tops of the doors. Here we have a sign, and it wasn't good enough to have the level beside each floor, but that level had to be color-coded. So it looks like level zero is purple or something, level two is red, level one is yellow, and then we have uh, we have these sign overhead sign here with arrows faintly pointing up and down with the hope that this actually is going to improve navigation. Uh, let's just keep going through this again. You know, we can't be subtle. We have to make it very obvious that this is a red floor that the person is on. Um, I think. And here, here we go. We've got uh, multiple arrows pointing in different directions that don't really mean much at all. Uh, we've gone back to icons, another picture here. Here we've put all the zones in different colors. So unless you were looking at a map, you wouldn't know that the blue zone is beside the red zone, which is beside the green zone. And it actually looks like each individual zone is... Um, yeah, I guess these are all 300 level rooms. Here, another common theme of color coding each level of the hospital. Um, again, having to put giant memorable um, imagery at the entrance to that wing or that clinic. Uh, here's an example of having to include uh, different colored arrows for each different pathways in the hospital. Uh, here we've gone complete to pictures. So if you're looking for the, the moon or the boat, you could just walk this way or the cafeteria or a one, whatever that means. Um, here we go again, you know, if you're looking for the green pharmacy, the blue outpatient clinic or the red accountant's office, come on through. Um, here, if you're looking for this pavilion, it's an orange. And anyway, let's just keep going. See, the, the problem with these are, one, these lists are very long to read. They're very hard to find what you're looking for. The coloring looks reasonably arbitrary. The, um, the, and the whole point of this um, wayfinding ideology to make each part of the hospital a unique, uh, different entrance and a unique, different styling, it's, it, at first it seems to make sense, but the big problem is that you need to get there. So simply having a bright red textured door at the entrance to uh, the ward on the south wing on the fifth floor um, texturing the door red won't know, allow you to know how to get to that door if you don't improve the navigation system. And I think that's the real um, problem with all these different uh, things we're looking at. 
is it's just adding in a lot of visual distraction without actually making it easier to get to the end destination. Right? So, you know, here's an example of this red textured floor on a magic wall on a random floor. How does this massive investment of cost uh, and disruption of the natural architecture of the space actually make it easier to get to this part of the hospital? And the fact is it doesn't. And so what has to happen is, and, you know, this is just over the top what we what a lot of this wayfinding is doing, you know, painting whole sections, completely different colors, um, because we think that it's actually making wayfinding better. The, the reality is, is that it doesn't actually let you get to that part of the hospital easier, which brings us here to part two, which is... Um, now, essentially, what you need to do is install lines on the ceilings, the floors, the uh, the walls that people can follow to try to get to these parts of the hospital. Because the first nav wayfinding improvements of blowing up the signs with you know over the top colors and imagery didn't actually allow people to know how to get to that part of the hospital easier. Now, the problem with this line system is one, it's visually very busy. At two, there's only a limited amount of space on all the ceilings, the walls, and the floors to draw colored lines for people to follow. And so inevitably, large parts of the hospital, or in fact, most of the hospital can't be represented on a line which someone walks on on the floor. And so only a few key parts of the hospital can actually be tracked using this technique. And second, these types of uh, multicolored uh, navigation lines are really tough to read for some people with uh, color blindness. And so it, it's not particularly user friendly. And as you see, it just takes over the entire building, the entire hallway. Um, it gets consumed by the navigation system with the assumption, look, here's an example of this, is the whole ceiling. Actually, this one's reasonably subtle and well built in. Um, but it just, the navigation system just is overbearing. And, it, and it, the question then is, is it actually better than the alternatives? Is there a better way to do this? I think there is, and we'll, and we'll get to that in a bit. But I want to first introduce one topic, which is this concept called chart junk. Okay, so Edward Tuffy, who is really the godfather of the visual display of quantitative information, published a book in 1983 with that title. You can view the original chapter from this 1983 book on his website. The link is in the blog post. The chapter is titled Chart Junk, Vibrations, Grids, and Ducks. This chapter goes through explaining why a lot of the additions to chart display software uh, over the years, the additions of textures and patterns and 3D effects and 2D effects have actually not improved the visual display of chart data, right? Because in a chart, the objective is to try to communicate information uh, most clearly. And anything which gets in the way of impairing uh, clear communication through a chart is called chart junk. And in general, this is extra decorations, bold colors, patterns, textures, 3D effects, cartoons, uh, uh, gradients, shading, which don't add anything to the final output. I have some screenshots here from uh, Google Images under chart junk which explain the different options. This image here is a particularly common one that Edward Tuffy refers to. As you can see, hidden behind this cartoon is a, a line chart. And we have another example here in the top right, which is there is another chart hidden inside of this monster's mouth. Drawing this monster does not actually add to the communication of this information which the chart is trying to define. In fact, it dumbed downs the information contained within. 
We won't go into a discussion about pie charts and why they should almost always never be used. That's for another day. But all this is chart junk. You know, these gradients here, for instance, do not add anything to this map. In fact, it just hampers the ability to see the separation uh, between the regions. I would propose that just as Edward Tuffy calls this chart junk, this excessive ornamentation of charts, which does not add to the actual communication of their purpose, which is to display information, I would propose that the addition of colors, tones, brighter and bolder patterns, cartoons and photos, textures, lines, arrows, and 3D effects, although well-intentioned, clutters and impairs the message of navigation systems. And just as this can be considered chart junk, you could use the exact same um, description of what's considered chart junk and apply that to nab junk and call it nab junk. And when you look at these images of chart junk compared to what we were looking at before, they actually look very similar. All right, the, the long rant about contemporary wayfinding ideology and its shortcomings is over. So I would like to propose an example of a really good hospital navigation system that I came across a few months ago in the Netherlands. It was in Radebound University Medical Center in Nezhem. And when I walked into the hospital, it was very strange. Their signs there had no cartoons, no colors, no patterns, no ostentatious uh, arrows or lines running up and down the walls of all the corridors and floors and ceilings. In fact, it was just black text on white boards. The signs were very small, very short, and somehow there was no chaos. People could easily find their way around the place. Here's how they did it. The first step is you're given something called a route number. Okay, so the route number is your end destination of where you're trying to get in the hospital. So in my case, I needed to get to route uh, 441. Now, ideally, you'll be told the route number ahead of time, before the test or appointment, or if you have a family member in the hospital, they'll tell you the route number of where you need to get to. As you can see, the route numbers for each building are uh, common yet unique. So this is a board for one of the buildings, and the root numbers all start with a 400 digit. We can look at the board of another building, and all the root numbers, in this case, start with a 700 digit. And so you can intuitively know that the root number of uh, the 500s building is kind of close to the 600s building, which is kind of close to the 700s building. And you can know that if you're looking for a, a 400s number and you're in the building which is showing 500s, that you're probably in the wrong place. Anyway, so the first step is you receive your root number. The second step is you just look up. You just look up at the ceiling and you look to see which direction that number is contained in. So here we have a very simple sign at an intersection which shows if you have a number which is between 356 to 790 or between 800 and 999, go left. If you have a root number which is between 791 and 796, go straight. And if it's between 797 and 799, uh, turn around and go behind you. Notice how this sign only has uh, really one, one or two uh, sign rows in the entire sign. They don't need to add more information to it because people navigating the system know their end destination. They know the root number they're trying to get to, and so they just need to look to find the ranges uh, that that number is within. As you can see, as you walk down this corridor, it the root number, the signs show you uh, at every intersection which routes are behind each uh, turn. We'll continue now, and you'll see that as you continue to walk down the route system, the signs get more and more specific. So at the start, it gave us a range between around 300 and 1,000. 
Now, as we walked further, it's showing us just down this quarter is routes 450 to 460. If we take this sign here, you'd go between 440 and 490. Again, they're able to accomplish all this uh, navigation without having to have lines on the floors and on the ceilings and on the walls. You just follow very simple, subtle signs uh, that can be placed at every single intersection throughout the building. When you finally get to a sort of an end part of this route system, in this case, route 797 to 799 is just to your right, uh, you'll then perhaps have a sign at the entrance uh, showing you the title of that route. And you'll notice this sign is just very classic, very classy, it's just a normal sign. It's not been designed by someone whose first cousin is Comic Stands, and there's no chart junk on it. In this case, we were looking for uh, Route uh, 441, and it's just behind this wall here, as you can tell by this number range indicated on the sign. And so this is a really uh, great system. It's really fast to navigate because if you think about it, every time you come to an intersection, all that the signage has to show you is which set of numbers is left, right, you know, behind you and the other direction. They don't need to list the name of every department and every unit in each of these directions every time. The other big advantage is that you don't need to put lines up and down the entire hallways. And unlike those line systems where you can only have a few different uh, departments represented on the line, this uh, number system allows you to actually represent all the routes in the entire hospital you're trying to get to. And so I do think that um, this route system, number system is a good uh, method. It could obviously be improved. For instance, I think it would be helpful to have some kiosks in some of the main atriums where users uh, could type in the destination they're looking for, and then perhaps it would print out a small piece of paper with the route number they're looking in order, if they didn't know it ahead of time. Uh, and in addition, it would be nice if in some way that the route number could allow you to know what uh, level that particular route you're looking for is on, if it's the first or the second or the third floor, for instance. Um, those would be the two big suggestions. Uh, as a final comment uh, on this term chart junk and uh, nav junk, if uh, anyone has any suggestions, I would be uh, quite willing to, uh, and quite interested to, to know them. Some other terms which were used included uh, navigation junk, uh, direction junk, map junk, wayfinding junk. Um, in the end, Peter Liu suggested that nav junk is probably uh, a better and the best uh, system to go with. I looked it up online and there's only nine Google results uh, for nav junk at this time. So if you wish, uh, it would be great if we could popularize this term to describe the excessive ornamentation of navigation systems, which actually detracts from the, objection, the objective of a net map system, which is to help someone to get to their end destination, not to uh, create over-the-top, ostentatious uh, wall decorations, which actually don't help um, get through and figure out how to navigate a hospital.